Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I've got a photo I took a number of years ago in France, back when we could get on airplanes and go places. Um, I'm playing around in On One Photo Raw 2021. I really like what I ended up coming up with this photo. I really brought the photo to life. It started out kind of drab, kind of boring, but I made a number of key moves that I think really popped the color and the light and the detail, which is, I, those are the main elements in a photo that I'm thinking about when I'm editing. And basically it brought it to life. So Here's the photo. You know, it's it's not particularly amazing or anything. I kind of like the composition. This is the castle. I think it's uh, Shenan So. It is Shenan So. I don't know if I said that right in the Loire Valley. Also, don't know if I said that right. But anyway, you may know the place. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. There are these people walking out. I thought it kind of framed nicely. So I wanted to edit this photo. So I'm starting over here in the Develop tab. I'm going to open Tone and Color and start with a little bit of contrast. And while the photo is already a little bit dark, adding contrast will darken it, as you can see. But that's okay. We're going to fix that here in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to pull the highlights down because I just tend to do that. Um, unless um, it's already fairly dark overall, I tend to pull the highlights back just a little bit. One of the cool things I think about this Tone and Color panel here on the Develop tab is that there's also a, a Mid-Tones uh, slider. So I like that quite a bit. So I pulled the Mid-Tones down just a little bit, not very much. Uh, but then I did lift shadows because the photo is obviously getting pretty dark. So I'm going to pull that up. And all I'm really doing is massaging the light, trying to get it looking, you know, the way I want it to look, I guess, basically. But there's before and there's current state. Not a big difference. We're still going to have a, a huge impact on the photo. First, I want to take the temperature and I want to go a little bit cooler overall, something I do a lot with my photos. I'm going to go to about 4,800. I'm going to leave the tint where it is for now and the vibrance. I'm going to bump that up, you know, low 20s, say, let's call it 22. And all I want to do is create a little bit more blue. If you look at the original photo, it's really kind of yellow overall. And there's a lot of green in it with the trees. And what you'll see in a little bit is there's kind of a greenish yellow tint on the castle. We're going to fix that too. But first, this was a temperature move uh, and a light adjustment to kind of get me to kind of where I wanted to start. And so now I'm basically done with the tone and color panel. But while I'm on the develop tab, I want to get into transform. And if you saw my uh, last on one video, I used the keystone to fix some really crooked verticals. The verticals here are not that bad. They're just a little bit off. So I'm just going to take the vertical slider and I'm just going to move this to like a negative 10 or 12. And if you look at that, I basically straightened up that castle. So if I turn that off, if you see, it is kind of leaning back. This was shot with a wide angle lens and now it's kind of straightened up. And I think that actually helps the tourists a little bit. Like you wouldn't necessarily, if you weren't looking for it or thinking hard about it, I don't think you would look at the tourists and say, well, they're kind of leaning back. But now when I change that, I think it's kind of obvious that they were. And now that I've done that, as often happens, um, you need to come in and crop and I'm also going to get that guy's arm out of the right-hand side. And I need to pull this in from the left as well because um, there was a little bit of space uh, that I lost there uh, when I um, did the vertical. And now I'm going to straighten, or excuse me, uh, move this around a little bit. And I think something about like that. So I'm going to hit Enter. I'm quite happy. I should point out before this started, I took some spots out with the eraser. Uh, just go to retouch and you grab that little band-aid and now I'm going to do that and take this little stick out of the uh, the dirt there and I'm fine with that but there may be some more spots in fact I think I see one but let's pretend that there aren't and you're not here to judge me on how sloppy my uh, uh, lens cleaning or sensor cleaning was um, anyway so I'm pretty good with a develop tab I like where this is now I want to pop in to the effects tab and start having some fun to me, the develop tab, it's like the develop uh, panel in Lightroom. It's kind of your getting started, balance the light, kind of those things. And then the edit tab or the effects tab here is where I go do my creative edits and kind of have fun. So I'm going to start with the filter. And um, also in that last video, I did the same one, which is HDR look. I really, really like this filter. It comes in so handy so often. So I've been using it on a lot of my, my photos and frankly, just having a great time with it. So I'm gonna, I just turned it on and let me show you the before and after. So there it is before. And now that I use the HDR look um, and I used it at the standard setting, which is compression of 100 and detail of 20. I didn't do anything else. I think it looks a lot better. It brightens up some of those darker areas, which by the, you know, by the definition of HDR, you're trying to create a higher dynamic range, more you know, light distribution, uh, more evenly distributed light, I guess across the photo, kind of like a typical HDR. And I like that. It's not over the top. Like you wouldn't look at that and think, 
Oh, that's an HDR, man. Barf, dude, get out of here. Um, I think it looks fine. So that's my opinion. You can differ if you like, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna go to the sunshine filter next and I'm gonna hit natural. And that puts the amount at 50. I'm gonna give it a little bit more warmth. So like a seven or something. And then a little bit of saturation to about a five. And this uh, four or five, something like that. And let me, let me show you the before and after. So there's before the sunshine filter. You know, it looks fine. It's not drab or anything. The sunshine filter gives it a nice little kick, a little bit brighter, slightly warmer, slightly more saturated based on these sl uh, slider movements. But I like it. I think it's making the photo pop and I'm starting to really get that feeling of, hey, this photo is coming to life between HDR look and sunshine. So now that I've done those, I'm really gonna try to bring it to life here a little bit more with some dynamic contrast. And what I wanna do is go to natural and that puts small, medium, and large at 0, 15, and 20. I'm gonna take the highlights. I gotta look at my notes here. I'm pulling back the highlights to so about 55 or 56. And that's really impacting the sky, which I like. And I'm gonna add a little bit of vibrance. Let's go to about 14. And so if you look at this before and after, there it is before and after. And you can see the sky is a little bit more uh, rich, right? A little bit more um, oomph in the sky and a little bit more pop in the foreground as well. I think that looks nice. I'm pretty happy with it. And now I'm gonna go get Color Enhancer. So this is where I was talking about, there's a little bit of a green and uh, kind of yellow tint in the castle, which I don't really like. So I went and got this tool and I went and got tint and I moved that to about a 35, whoa, uh, not that high. Yeah, about a 35. And just moving that tint for me, made it. In fact, I'm going to pull that back a little bit. So maybe make that about a 30. But if I turn that off, there it is before you can see a distinct yellowy green. By the way, if you're ever playing with the HSL and you're playing with a green and having trouble with it, play with the yellow too. They overlap so much. And so um, anyway, it's a distinct yellow green kind of tint to that castle wall, which I don't really like. And once I hit it with a, a tint uh, in the magenta and headed toward magenta, that made it for me. Also, the sand is kind of brownish, kind of, I don't know, kind of blah. And now it's got a little bit more, it feels a little bit more real to me, a little bit more looks like real granite by that tint hit that well nicely um, or hit that nicely as well. And I, I don't know, I just like it. So I used Color Enhancer simply just to get the tint and slap that on there. Okay, now I'm looking at it and I love the photo. I really like where I am, but I'm a little unhappy with the sky because it's got a little too much in it. So what I'm gonna do is go get noise reduction. And over here, I'm gonna hit strong and just kind of slap that on there. But what I'm gonna do is paint it into the sky. I love the detail everywhere else. And as you can see, um, the castle and these walls and, and, and all that stuff there are losing detail because of noise reduction. Because when you apply a filter, it applies globally by default. So I'm gonna mask it in. So I'm gonna click on this little icon here. I'm gonna invert so that the mask is black, which means it shows up nowhere and I'm in paint in mode. So all I wanna do is just come over here and paint that noise reduction in. And I'm going, going kind of quick and sloppily because this is a live or I'm recording it or whatever. And I don't wanna um, spend too much time. I'm just doing a quick job just to give you an idea. But you can see there's a representation of the mask over there. And you can always hit view if you wanna see what the mask looks like. And you can see I missed that spot there. You can see how sloppy I was. And this is not a tutorial on how to do accurate masking. I just wanted to basically get that done, get it done quickly, and basically smooth out some of that sky. So if you look at the before and if you're looking at the sky, you can see more texture in the clouds and, of course, a little bit of grain as well. And a lot of that probably came from both dynamic contrast but also HDR look, which I applied globally. But I could have gone back and just uh, painted that in selectively. However, dynamic contrast, I did that one primarily to pop the sky, which gave me a little bit better control over the light there, so that wouldn't have made sense. But HDR look, for sure, I could have painted that in just to the kind of the foreground uh, and avoided some of what I'm doing here. But regardless, um, if you screw something up, there's always a way to fix it. That's what I love about software. So that's noise reduction. I'm feeling pretty good. And now I'm just gonna wrap this up with a vignette. And as you may have seen in that previous video that I talked about, I'm a fan of big softy. That's a little too big though, so I'm gonna fix that a little bit. I'm gonna do size about 70, so I'm really kind of broadening uh, or expand, uh, what am I saying? Shrinking the vignette, if you will. The size is getting bigger, but it's going further out, so it's kind of um, a little bit backward sounding. And then my roundness, I'm gonna adjust just a tiny bit, you know, maybe something about like that. So if I turn off this vignette, there it is before 
and there it is after. It's really very slight, very subtle, and very far out of the edges. And now I'm seeing a couple of more spots, which I need to go remove. But that's my workflow here and how I use these various tools, uh, including the stuff on the develop pa uh, pane, as well as over here on effects to really get the look that I want. And again, for me, it was really all about bringing this photo to life. So if you look at the before and after, I mean, much more muted, really kind of gray, kind of plain, kind of boring, uh, very yellow, and just, you know, kind of blah. And, um, you know, I think it looks a whole lot better. Obviously, the verticals have been adjusted as well, as you can see, but I think the colors look better. I think the overall contrast is better. I think the detail with that HDR look tool really pops in the right places. I think I smoothed the sky nicely. And I, really, that's my edit. So that's how I brought this one to life, starting with something that was kind of frankly, overlooked for many years in my library until today when I got it out and said, you know what, I need to go conquer this guy. That's how I conquered it today, my friends. Hope it helps. Hope it gives you some ideas. Have fun editing. Take care of yourselves. Come back for the next one, which will be really soon. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you later, and adios.